Good morning and welcome to the worship service of the Vine Fellowship Church in Copley, Ohio on this the first Sunday after Christmas. My name is Mark Rupert and I'm the pastor of the church and we are so excited that you joined us today for worship. If you're a member, a friend, or maybe a new friend, we're glad that you're with us and we'd also like to hear from you during the service, so please share your comments. If you do not have a church home, we would like to have you consider our church your home. And if you're in need of pastoral care, please call the church office. I have a few announcements today. During every Advent season, we take a special offering, which is the Christmas joy offering. And this is the last Sunday that we are collecting this special offering. So if you wish to contribute, please do so this week. Also, I always take vacation time as soon as the Christmas Eve service is over. And this year is no different. And so our presbytery, Eastminster Presbytery, along with our synod, which is the Synod of the Trinity, they have made available preachers who have graciously shared their sermons with us so that we could use them while on vacation. And so today we are being blessed by one of those preachers and their sermon. He is the Reverend Dr. Dan Saperstein, who is the executive presbyter of the Presbytery of Lake Huron. And so I want to thank our Presbytery and Synod for making this available to our pastors. Now please join with me in our call to worship. Praise God, all who dwell on this earth. Praise God in the heights and depths of life. We will recount the deeds of God. Surely God has shown us goodness and mercy. Praise God, sun and moon and stars. Praise God, fire and hail, snow and frost. Men and women, young and old together, let us praise and honor our Creator. Let God's name be praised and exalted. God's glory is above heaven and earth. By God's steadfast love, we are drawn to worship. Our gracious Savior leads us in new ways. Let us worship God. I 
please join with me in our New Year's prayer, followed by our Lord's Prayer. Let us pray together. O God of love, by your grace and mercy, we come to the end of one year and the beginning of another. We gather this last Sunday of the year in gratitude and joy as we remember your goodness to us. Your love has led us along sunlit paths of quiet joy. Your spirit has supported us through the shadowed val valleys of sorrow and humiliation. Your presence has encouraged us in times of doubt and difficult actions. We thank you for the friends you have given each of us, for this church that is a place of refuge in desert times, a shelter in the storm. Lead us, O oh God, as a church and as individuals, along the uncharted trails of the future. Teach us to find satisfaction in the challenge of the new, the untried. Make us sensitive to life's deeper meaning, the giving of ourselves in service to others. For loved ones ill, for those sorrowing, for those separated from their loved ones, we pray your blessing. Bind us together in your great love. We pray in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, as your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth, so may your spirit indwell and illumine the reading of your word, that the word may reside in our hearts, transform our lives, and make us beacons of grace and truth to others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 38. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was a righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple 
And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. Amen. Greetings, my friends. It's good to see you all. It must not be easy for you to see your dear old friend Simeon so near to death. Oh, please do not protest. A century is long enough for anyone to live. And I know my time is now at hand. At long last, I can depart in peace. It was good of you to come so quickly when I sent for you. You must listen carefully, for I have not even the strength left in these old bones to lift my voice, and I must tell you of the great joy that has come to pass. You may not believe me when I tell you this, but it has finally happened. I have beheld the coming of the Lord's Messiah for the deliverance of Israel. Oh, do not scoff, dear friends. I may be old, but these are not just the ravings of a dying man. Yes. Caesar still sits on his throne, but I tell you it shall not last long. A new day has come for us at last, my friends, and I have witnessed its dawning. Hear me out. I was in prayer one morning, not long ago, when suddenly I was overcome with a compelling notion to go to the temple. It felt as if the Holy One himself were speaking to me in this very room. I had known that feeling only once before, long ago, when as a young man I was worshiping in the assembly of the elders, and that same voice spoke within me. Blessed are you, O Simeon, for your days shall not end before you behold the Lord's Messiah. But that was long ago, and I had many times almost despaired as I saw the poverty of my people, the strong fist of Rome clenched more tightly around their necks each year. Not long after, Herod began construction on his temple. To us, it was a sign of hope that God's promises to our fathers would be fulfilled, that the Messiah would come with his armies and restore justice to our land. Then, just as the scriptures say, the glory of the Lord himself would shine forth from his holy temple on Mount Zion. Many hours I would gaze to the east, looking over the Mount of Olives, looking for the Messiah to come. Those words of the prophet would run through my mind again and again. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hands double for all her sins. How I longed for our triumphant hero to come. And now I tell you, I was wrong. 
God be praised. I was wrong for in a most delightful and surprising way, God has shown us salvation. Let me explain. I was still quite, it was still quite early when I arose from my prayers and I went straight to the sanctuary as usual, for I had always been told that was where the Lord's Messiah would appear. Hours passed. A certain restlessness overcame me, and I arose to leave, and as I walked out toward the court of the Gentiles, I spied them. There, across the court, was a young family in the place where the beggars gather. They were poor people, you could tell, the man, the woman, the infant. The mother was not much more than a child herself. She and her husband had obviously come to redeem their firstborn son, as the law requires, but it was the child that fascinated me. For some reason, I was drawn to him, and the sight of his face filled my heart with peace, and a strange and wonderful thought was given me. Could this be the reason I was led to the temple that day? Could this tiny infant be the mighty savior of Israel? Impossible. Where were his armies? There he was, helpless, vulnerable, weak. And then I remembered the word of the Lord. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And I remembered also how the prophet spoke of him. He will not cry or lift up his voice. A bruised reed he will not break. And it struck me that Messiah would not need to come with armies of warriors to prove his might. Messiah would come as the most helpless, most tender, most innocent of persons, and even in weakness, reduce Caesar to nothing, for God would be with him. But this can't be, I told myself. Why would he be here among the women and the Gentiles rather than in the sanctuary with the priests? But God brought to my mind his prophecy concerning Messiah. It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Oh, the depths of the love of God here amid the weak and the outcast here in the shadow of the might of Caesar. The Lord's Messiah has come for the whole world as a tender child. And so I approached the babe and I cradled him in my arms. And as this old man looked upon the child's peaceful face, I laughed at God's wonderful irony. I blessed the Lord and I sang out, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And as I held him in my weak arms, I looked at his mother, and I was filled with compassion. Perhaps it was the bitter experience of age, knowing that every joy has its sorrow. Or maybe it was God speaking to me, but I beheld in this child a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. I knew that many would be drawn to him as I was, but many more would not accept such a Messiah. And I saw in the spirit a day when his mother's heart would be torn asunder with doubt and grief. And so having blessed the family, I told her in the spirit, behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is spoken against and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. By this time, many had gathered around, and Anna, the prophetess, had confirmed the redemption of Jerusalem was at hand. Others spoke gossip of certain shepherds in the hills who had been visited by angels concerning the birth of a child like this. But I did not stay to listen. My job was complete. I felt as if a great burden had been lifted from me. My mind flashed to the story of our father Israel, who declared when his beloved son Joseph was returned to him at last, now I am willing to die, for I have seen your face.
I too can die now. For I have seen the salvation of my people, and even of the whole world, in this baby named Jesus. Caesar may have his armies, but God has given us one whose strength is in weakness, and whose glory is in humility. Dear friends, I know you must think I've slipped, but I urge you to read the scriptures. It is just as it has been written, only we have been too blind to see it. I urge you, receive this child, for he is the Redeemer of Israel and the Savior of the world. Now I must rest. Soon I will not be with you, but do not grieve, dear friends, for I go with peace in my soul. Yes, I believe I will rest now. Farewell, my friends, and may the peace of that child be with you as well.
Thank you for joining us in worship today, and I thank our guest preacher. I pray that as this year is closing, that 2021 will be a healthy, blessed, virus-free year for all of you. May you have a happy new year. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon each and every one of you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.